So I saw this LinkedIn post the other day as I was scrolling through my feed, and I just glanced over it, and I saw Twitter shipped this massive security uh, vulnerability, and here's what went down. And before I even like read the rest of the post, I thought in my head, most likely it's going to be either cross-site scripting or some kind of cross-site request forgery. With this one, it could be that somebody is like making a tweet and they write some JavaScript inside of that tweet. And then maybe that tweet gets stored somewhere in a database and it doesn't get sanitized. And then when somebody views that tweet, instead of just viewing like the raw text that was stored, that JavaScript somehow gets executed. Now, most likely this wouldn't happen. A lot of things would have to go wrong for Twitter to ship something like this. But that's kind of where my mind went to. And then the other one, probably the more common one, cross-site request forgery. Maybe when somebody creates like a Twitter URL, they put in a bunch of parameters that come after the main URL. And then if somebody clicks this, they will be taken to Twitter and then those extra parameters will execute some kind of code on the client, like making some kind of request. And if you're already signed in on Twitter, your credentials, your, this is supposed to be a key, uh, are gonna be used for that request. So maybe it could make you follow somebody that you don't wanna follow or delete something or something like that, or maybe uh, subscribe or send money to somebody. Again, this one also seemed pretty unlikely. A lot would have to go wrong for Twitter to do something like this. And I'm sure they have like best practices in place. So I'm curious, what did you think the vulnerability would be for Twitter to actually ship something to production? Well, let's take a look because it is a lot more trivial than you would have ever expected. So Twitter was rebranded to X. We all know that, but nobody really calls it that. So on April 8th, Twitter pushed a change to basically replace anything that said twitter.com to x.com. So literally just like a uh, search and replace. So technically it could update more than just URLs because, and I guess we'll see later in this post, so I won't even spoil it, it's in the next line. So if you had something like space-twitter.com in your tweet, that would be displayed as space-x.com. Now, it doesn't actually change the tweet. So whatever you stored, whether your tweet was made in the past or you made the tweet after this change, it would not change any text from your tweet. It would just render the text differently. So if you, if you had a tweet, space-twitter.com, it would be shown as space-x.com. But the underlying link does not change. So that's where the danger comes from. And by the way, I'm not a security expert by any means. I think even the explanations I gave at the beginning of this video might not have been perfect. I think they were mostly correct, though. But this one, you don't have to be a security expert to see how this can go wrong. And so that's what I'm going to get into. Uh, because like he says, it sounds innocent at first. But when you think a little bit closer... What if somebody bought this domain, which maybe nobody has it yet, space-twitter.com. I buy this domain and then I create a SpaceX clone. Like, for example, this is the SpaceX website, right? What if I created a clone that looked very, very similar to this one? And suppose you can like log in or shop for stuff. So when somebody sees this link that I posted, they're not going to see that link. They're going to see space-x.com. So if you click that, you expect you're going to spacex.com. And when you get to the site, it looks like spacex.com. So then you use it as if it were a real site. Now, what if you were logging in and then you put in your real credentials? Well, at that point, it's hard to fake that functionality. So we, it wouldn't work. You'd try to log in and it wouldn't work. And that's when your credentials have been lost. This is a very like classic example of like phishing credentials, taking somebody's credentials, because now that that fake website will have your credentials and then they can use them on the real website. And it's kind of like I'm not going to sit here on my like high horse and act like I've never made a mistake before. But this is like I'll continue with the rest of the post because this is a really good write up, I think. X opened up a honeypot of phishing attacks by neglecting very basic security principles. Uh, this mistake suggests a couple of things. The engineers making this change are inexperienced. I can't imagine somebody with a lot of experience doing this. And, and that's perfectly okay. People don't have experience. They're going to make mistakes. Good intentions don't work. Systems do, right? That's why we have code reviews. That's why we have a lot of guardrails and checks so that something like this never makes it to production. So it kind of makes you wonder, well, would this have happened at Twitter a few years ago? Maybe not. 
like maybe some of the processes have changed at Twitter recently with like um, you know a lot of the changes that they've been making. And number two, either X has no security team or a security team never uh, reviewed this change or the security team is useless. And nobody likes bureaucracy. When I was at Google, I was making a very, very like trivial migration. And there was some code that was related to like uh, security. I can't really go super in depth, but I needed literally a security review to take that code and just migrate it to another like application or another service. And it, the security review was really annoying, to be honest. Like it, it wasn't like when the guy actually sat down and looked at the code, it took him like 20, 30 minutes. And he was like, OK, that's good. But a lot of like the paperwork and the other like bureaucracy involved of it kind of like slowed down the project. I needed like an extra review and then all that stuff. Nobody likes dealing with it, but it does work. You never want to ship a security vulnerability at Google scale or Twitter scale. As much as people don't like it, it's pretty important. I don't think anybody can argue against that. And then number three here, if a high profile change like this uh, gets shipped without concern, what other kinds of like things that are less visible are being like uh, like changes that are being made at Twitter right now that we don't know of that could be like security issues or just other types of issues like maybe data privacy, right? Maybe your data is being leaked. Maybe they're they're, you know, investing less on the security side. And I'm not like trying to you know, talk too negatively about Twitter. My bias is that, you know, Twitter is probably my least uh, favorite social media platform. I'm kind of surprised it's not dead yet. I hope it dies. So I have to stop. Uh, so I don't have to like continue using it. But that said, I think this is still like a valid concern. Like my bias, however strong it is, I don't think that invalidates any of these points that he's made. And to give uh, Twitter credit, they did reverse the change like one day later. Probably somebody pointed it out on Twitter like, hey, look at this. And so they did roll it back quickly. Maybe that guy stayed up all night. Maybe Elon Musk texted him to change it in the middle of the night or something. But yeah, so pretty embarrassing change. And I want to quickly show something that I think is pretty relevant. I saw this post the other day. Google's data structures and algorithms playlist is out and it's open for everyone. So I'm naturally like skeptical. So I was like, huh, so Google made that. That's kind of surprising to me. And this guy works at Google. So I thought there, this must be credible. So I took a closer look at it. I left this comment because the site looked kind of fishy to me. So like if you go to this site, like I clicked the link and if you look at the domain, it's not even a Google.com domain. It looks like a Google site. They got like all this like stuff everywhere, but it didn't like it had a little like a few things here and there that kind of made it seem like it wasn't actually created by Google. For example, look at this top right sign in button over here. If I hover it, why does the text turn blue? That seems kind of like a styling bug, which isn't like a huge deal, but that made me kind of skeptical. If you click it, it takes you not even to the original like Google login. It takes you to like this Firebase app and it turned out I made a comment saying that this doesn't seem like it's actually created by Google. It turns out that it actually is. I don't know why it had those issues. Maybe it's an intern project or something like that. But I think that's kind of why it's good to be skeptical. It's good to be on your guard because you don't want to fall victim to one of these issues. Like this post got a ton of upvotes and my comment got a lot of upvotes, even though I turned out to be wrong. Uh, even so, I think like it could, if it had been an issue, like people would have literally lost their Google credentials. You would have used your Google credentials on a site that isn't um, actually created by Google. Like that's the risk there. And then, you know, you lose everything because of that. So, you know, good to stay on your toes, I think.